also known as the Volta Dam, the Akasombo Dam is located in the southern eastern region of Ghana in the Akasombo Gorge and part of the Volta River region. The idea of this dam dates back to the 1920s, but it wasn't until Ghana gained its independence in 1957 that the project gained momentum. In particular, Ghana's first president Kwame Nkrumah, who was widely renowned as Ghana's founding father, was a strong advocate for the dam. By harnessing the power of the voter to generate electricity, President Nkrumah saw it as a way to modernize the country and improve the standard of living for its citizens and in addition, enhancing the nation's industrial capabilities. Not only did Ghana have to literally move mountains to get the Akasombo Dam project on the go, it needed to source funding from a combination of international loans and aid to facilitate this financial colossal. Initially, the project was estimated to cost around $140 million in 1961, but by the time it was completed in 1965, the total cost had escalated to approximately $258 million, almost double what the project was expected to cost at the start. In today's economic climate, this would be equivalent to about $2.7 billion. With the assistance of several international partners, including the World Bank, the United States, and the United Kingdom, Ghana was able to get the funding required to undertake the dam's construction. Due to this, foreign investors seized Ghana's desperate position and took advantage by providing loans with high interest rates and strict repayment terms. This in return meant that a significant portion of the nation's resources were diverted from essential development areas, a price left for the Ghanaian people to pay. A key thing to note that strongly influenced the funding was that this was all taking place during the Cold War times. This was a battle between three main ideologies pushing to dominate the world either through communism, socialism or capitalism. Through this, their aims were to sway non-aligned or even win over other aligned countries into their beliefs in order to act in favor of their agenda. Through this, the United States, which represented the West's capitalistic ideology, saw the Akasombo Dam as an investment opportunity which they could use to negate Nkrumah's socialist ideals. This is something that Nkrumah strongly opposed and spoke out against and in fact, he raised this matter at the United Nations Assembly in 1960, stating that a desperate attempt is being made to extend the Cold War to Africa and exclaiming that the United Nations must not let this happen. Despite all of this, President Nkrumah knew that this was the only way that the project was going to happen, so in return, he had no choice but to give in to the Western ideals. Soon after, construction of the Kasombo Dam started in 1961 and was completed by 1965. The project was a monumental task involving the excavation of over 12 million cubic meters of earth and rock, leading to the subsequent creation of Lake Volta. Due to the nature of works that was required, the Kasombo Dam construction site was a high-risk environment where workers dealt with heavy machinery explosive for rock blasting, and other life-threatening conditions. Tragically, 28 workers lost their lives during the construction phase, highlighting the dangers faced by those who worked tirelessly to bring this project to fruition. This tragic fate sadly did not come as a shock as the blame lies on the main contractor Emprigelo, an Italian construction consortium who had just completed constructing the Cariba Dam in Zambia, where 86 construction workers had lost their lives. With a clear track record of negligence and poor safety management procedures, it is shocking that they were still able to win this contract. Although there was a significant decline in fatalities in the construction of the Akasombo Dam, which was a drastic improvement compared to the Kariba Dam, the responsibilities over the lives lost still remain in the hands of Emperor Gelo who must take accountability for these deaths. 
Despite these challenges and the flooding of the Volta River, which delayed works by over three months, the Akasombo Dam was completed a month ahead of schedule. Today, memorials in Akasombo Township and St. Barbara Catholic Church have been put up to honor those who lost their lives in the making of this dam. Upon completion, the Akasombo Dam generated 912 megawatts of electricity which was a huge surplus to the nation's electrical grid. However, only 20% of this total electricity was applied to the Ghanaian people, which at the time, the small portion from the dam represented 70% of Ghana's domestic electrical supply. But the big question is, where did the rest of the 80% of the dam's generated electricity go? A huge 80% of the total electricity output was allocated to the Volta Aluminium Company, also known as Valco, which was a Ghanaian subdivision of Keza Aluminium, operating the smelter that came as part of the deal to secure funding from Edgar Keza, who exploited Ghana's financial position to get cheap electricity and evade industrial taxation. However, this didn't last for too long because in 1983, President Jerry Rowling successfully assembled a team that managed to extract more money from Valco by nationalizing the aluminium smelter and finally lifting Ghana out of their post-independence debt. By doing this, Ghana gained more control over their vast electrical supply, meaning that much more of it could be used towards the nation's grid, helping to bring down the electricity cost which had been rising rapidly, bringing frustration to the people and eventually prompting Rollins to make this move. Perhaps the most disruptive effects caused by the dam was the relocation of around 80,000 inhabitants of the Volta River Basin that equated to just over 1% of Ghana's population at the time. The resettlement of people from 740 small villages to 52 larger ones proved disastrous causing issues in communications between eight different ethnic groups resettled, each of whom had their own dialect and unique cultural practices. Additionally, the influx of male workers during the construction of the dam, coupled with the collapse of rural economies and the instability of the nation's economy, resulted in an increase in women finding work in prostitution and in return, HIV becoming a prominent issue in the surrounding districts such as Mania Krobo, and yellow crobo. The infection rate of this region is said to have been over four times of the nation's average during this period. Lake Volta itself contributed to many health issues such as a spike in malaria cases within the region due to an increase in the population of waterborne vectors like mosquitoes. Evidently, it is quite clear to see that at the time of the dam's construction, the long-term environmental health and social consequences were not given much thought at all by the planners. Instead, it was the economic factors that were given overwhelming priority. Here's a fun fact. Lake Volta's massive water volume is so vast that it also influences local weather patterns creating its own microclimate. Due to this, the region now experiences reduced rainfall and higher temperatures further compounding economic and welfare issues on the local communities. So, to put it in short, the Akasombo Dam stands as a monumental achievement in Ghana's post-independence development. While it has driven industrial growth and provided much-needed electricity, it has also resulted in significant social, economic and environmental challenges. The story of the Akasombo Dam is a reminder of the complexities and trade-offs involved in large-scale infrastructure projects in Africa, highlighting the neocolonial issues still being faced even till today by African countries post-independence. Make sure you let us know your thoughts on this historical project, what did you like the most about it, and what project do you want us to explore next on this series of Constructing Africa. As always, Thank you for tuning in to Bio Network. Be sure to subscribe, share, and click the like button if you haven't yet. See you on the next one.